What is music therapy? There's many definitions for music therapy and everyone has their own way of explaining it. Um, my, one of my mentors from school, I liked his definition the best, that it's the enhancement of human capabilities through music's effect on the brain. So. Um, what is your educational background in music therapy? I went to Augsburg College for four years and um, to get um, approved by or into music therapy you have to attend uh, American Music Therapy Association accredited college. In Minnesota there's only two. One is Augsburg and then the other is the University of Minnesota. So I went to Augsburg and then you have to also complete 1200 hours of internship and so and that has to be at another AMTA accredited facility. And so my education with that was at Good Samaritan Society University Specialty Center in Minneapolis. How do you learn or how, do, how does somebody teach how to do music therapy? Um, basically a lot of hands-on um, clinical training. When you're going through your coursework at whatever college you're at, you're, you have to do clinical practica and so I spent six semesters at different facilities and you always have an on-site supervisor there who's basically just um, having you watch sessions, observe sessions, then you do your own sessions and so it's a lot of hands-on work but also learning about um, just aspects of human physiology, psychology, music skills, Things like that so it all is just the encompassing um, when you actually do music therapy it's just the all-over bringing together of these different fields so how does music therapy work um, that was an interesting question when I read that because it just really depends on who you're working with and if you're thinking more of a medical model there's been a lot of research just out there because when you're trying to establish music therapy as um, a credible field, you have to have a lot of evidence-based research out there. And so there's a lot of people working on um, providing evidence that music actually affects the immune system. And I know right in one of your further questions too, and how, you know, how do people say that it's actually a a viable practice um, and so one of my mentors actually developed a model of music therapy called biomedical music therapy and basically it's um, all-encompassing on the music's effect on um, boy blood cells and just the immune system and how it works is I don't know if any of you have taken much anatomy or physiology yet but uh, basically, you start looking at the pituitary gland, and music can have the effect to reduce and calm um, the transmitters um, uh, by the amygdala, which in turn re um, calms things with the uh, pituitary gland, the hypothalamus, which in turn, you know, decreases the amount of the ACTH hormone, which then limits how much cortisol there is is in the bloodstream. When that's reduced, you actually have an elevation of white blood, uh, white blood cells. And so there actually is a medical model, you know, if you really want to get really in depth with it. Um, but then if you're just looking at music therapy with other populations, you know, if you're looking at education settings with children, you know, of course you're not going to focus on music's effect on the immune system. You look at it in other ways. And so same with um, here with people in the nursing home, you know, when I work with people who have Alzheimer's, it's more just uh, sensory stimulation, enhancement of their capabilities, um, reminiscing. So it really depends on who you're working with. So. Does music affect different groups more or differently than others that you have noticed, like mm -hmm. specific groups? Mm -hmm. Well, that goes back to what I was saying. Um, whatever group you're working with, you're always assessing them first to figure out what really the goals are for music and so even there's a wide variety when you're working with kids like I was saying before 
you're going to be working on different goals than you are here in the nursing home. And um, so, for instance, when you're working with kids, it's a lot of education-based or teaching emotions or um, self-expression, that sort of thing. And kids use the music, you know, a lot of times you just get up and dance and motivational for them. Whereas here in the nursing home, you find with people who have Alzheimer's, it's one of the last things they can respond to. And it's just such a natural thing. They always say, just even with the rhythm of your heartbeat, it's just ingrained in you. And um, those songs you learn when you're in your 20s, it's just something you don't forget. And so it just depends on who you're really targeting. So it definitely affects every population differently. Do you ever notice a difference in patients over the course of the therapy period as they become immersed in the music? That's what uh, your whole session is about, is finding some sort of change throughout your session. That's um, your goal. Every intervention you have, you have um, your objective and your, or your goal and your objective to reaching that goal. And so it's all about change. You know, if you're working in the hospital, a lot of times it's working on pain reduction. And so um, you're targeting the patient with whatever music is relaxing to them. and watching their pain decrease here, or a lot of times what I see on my floor is I have a lot of residents who are very agitated, can't communicate, um, but if you sing a song with them, you can really see their body just physically relax and just that sense of feeling almost safe and right again, and so definitely mm -hmm, it's what it's all about. Do you find that people respond better or worse to certain types of music, and why do you think this might occur? Um, for the same reason that we choose what well, music we listen to on the radio for driving our car, you know, some people will choose heavy metal, or some people find it repulsive, or some people love classical, some people don't. So music really, music therapy really is targeted towards people's um, music interests. It's um, a lot of times revolving on what we call the ISO principle where you have to meet people where they are and what their interest is. And uh, specifically working here, my residents respond to music that they learned in their 20s. It's what they remember. If I play a new song, um, if I went up there and you know sang Kelly Clarkson or something just to throw it out there, they, it, I would not get a response from them Whereas if I play something from the 30s and 40s, they'll light up. And so it's really whatever people's music taste and music interest is, a lot of times it's what you use in your ses sessions. <laughs> so. Are there any stories about music therapy that you would like to share with us? One lady who sticks out very near and dear to my heart uh, was playing the piano one time. She was just sitting on the couch. And the next thing I knew, she was up next to me just marching along to the music and it just it was so amazing to see staff walk by and literally their jaws drop because they just don't know that these people have these capabilities anymore but some the music just reaches into them and brings them back to life is a term we can throw around here um, you know, figuratively it just seems like it brings these people back to life and so those are the moments that keep me doing what I'm doing and we find it's really important to have music. Do you have any closing thoughts on how music can positively affect people? I just, I passionately believe that music is important for everyone. That's why too I was saying that I can't pick one set of people that I would feel is most beneficial for because I'm sure you have all had experiences too where you feel stressed or you've had a bad day and are just really excited and music just meets you where you are and it somehow just gives uh, you know, when you can't find the words almost to your emotions it just matches you and just somehow makes you feel even more in tune with that emotion just you know if you're happy it meets you where you are helps you feel even happier it's if you're sad it just can lift you up and so that's why I feel like music really is beneficial because it's so universal and it is right for everybody. Everyone has that music that touches them and so
that's why that's why I'm passionate about music therapy.